Good morning, plant breeders. Hey, this is David Benson with Cornhusker Hybrids LLC in Lincoln, Nebraska, where our mantra and trademark is success starts with the seed. No truer words have been spoken in this business. Hey, listen, today we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to talk about basics of plant breeding budgets. You cannot believe the questions that I get about budgets in plant breeding and how to do them and you know you do a budget a budget in your plant breeding uh, business or your seed company or your nursery winter nursery program or your greenhouses or whatever it else that you're responsible for is pretty much like a budget for your house i mean you have costs and you have income sometimes in research we actually don't have much income all we have is the expenses and then everything's got to come back in the sales part of your business but right now, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as I can. And there's really three things that go into a budget. And we're not going to talk about two of them very much. The first one is infrastructure, which for big companies or any companies, anything outside your location is some sort of infrastructure cost for those companies, but not for you. In other words, big companies with a lot of buildings and land and investments in other companies and investments in technology and everything else are going to have a huge infrastructure. If you're out with a, with a seed production business in India, let's say, your structure of things are going to be much different. Everything might be on you. But let's just, we're not going to talk about the infrastructure part of the business. The stuff outside of your area of responsibility, which is a cost for the company and which makes the company work. We're not going to talk about that. Capital, we're only going to talk about briefly because I want to get into the operating budget part. But with capital, those are the essential long-term expenses that have to be made to keep your research station, your seed production facility, your winter nursery, your greenhouse, whatever you're doing, your marker system lab going. In other words, one of the biggest things that's capital that most a lot of people at stations or in business deal with are vehicles. And research directors are paranoid about vehicles. Equipment, whether it be tractors, trucks, um, mark, you, know, you have marker systems, you have irrigation systems, you have you know things like a van to haul people, you have a greenhouse you know, to build the greenhouse, you got nursery dryers, you have seed treatment. I mean, the list goes on and on that you could have. Those are all capital. The one you're going to deal with the most at a station in most places is vehicles and equipment, and then a little bit dependent on what you do at your particular facility that you're responsible for the budget. Now, there is some new things like a drone or a UAV. That's capital. A robot that's counting kernels or making pollinations or taking data, that's capital. A marker system's capital. Some new technologies that you're working on, or artificial intelligence or something, that's all capital, okay? The main thing you're gonna deal with as a, as, as a station manager in a corn beating project or maybe in a blueberry project or vegetables or wheat or other crops is vehicles and equipment to keep the day-to-day -day operations going. That's all we're going to say about that because that's a totally different budget and it's long term. You're not dealing with that. You may have a line on your budget that the company puts on there for your capital. That's probably the way to look. So let's talk about the big deal, the operating budget, which is the day to day, month to month, year to year monies that need to be spent to meet the goals and objectives of your particular part of the seed business. And the biggest one by far that you gotta work with is gonna be salaries and wages. Full time, part time, and temporary that are needed to keep your station humming. And normally, when I did budgets years ago, and I'm pretty sure they're still the same, Salaries, wages, full-time, part-time expenses. So salaries and wages were like 66% of our operating budget. 
at our particular station. Okay? Other, and that's just the way it is. My salary, your salary, part-time people you hire, the temporary kids you hire to, to help, they all get paid. And they also have payroll overhead that comes back in there, you know, taxes and, and other things. But that's part of the salaries and wages. Other things that, common things that fall in for most people that are managing a part of the seed business would be land rent to, to operate on or where your building sits, repairs and maintenance of machinery and equipment and buildings, repairs and maintenance of anything you're a part of, supplies, whether they be research supplies, computer supplies, office supplies, seed treatment supplies, supplies. They're always that pollinating bags are a supply, okay? Harvest bags are a supply. Envelopes to put your seed into are a supply. Fuel and oil to keep everything running, fuel, oil, and electricity, travel costs if you travel to another station or you travel to another part of the world or where you might travel, and then your meals and entertainment that you have when you're out and away from your office, and then things like shipping. So those are just kind of the things I can think of off the top of my head that are day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year expenses. And you need to know, after you know what they are, then you gotta break them down and you've got to know the inputs and the cost of every essential operation. So I'm just gonna break maize breeding down into like four essential operations. You plant, you pollinate or create new germplasm. You pollinate, in our case, you either submate, self, or, hand, or, or make crosses, or produce seed in isolation fields, but again, it's by crosses. We harvest it, we have seed prep in there as needed, and we repeat this cycle twice a year. Plant, pollinate, harvest, seed prep. Plant, pollinate, harvest, seed prep. And that's essentially what we do, and you can get into the seed prep and other things, and you know, there might be safety meetings, or there might be this travel or that, but that's kind of what we do. That's what you do at a corn breeding station. I suspect that's what a lot of people do at a lot of places in research and seed production. Now, if you're in sales or marketing, you're, you're, you're gonna be looking at something else. But we're talking about a field station and a budget that, that you draw up that shows this is how much it costs and this is what we get. So where I'm saying you gotta know the inputs and cost of every essential operation, I want to know how much it costs to plant. I wanna know how much it costs to, to pollinate a plant. I wanna know how much it costs to harvest a plot. And I sure wanna know what my overall cost of a nursery row is and my overall cost of a research plot, however you define that. In markers, it might be number of markers. In a greenhouse, with conveyor belts, it might be something totally different. But you're going to have to have a way to show and know how your money's being spent. And you certainly can't make changes or know where things are, if how, how to do things different, unless you know your costs. And it's not that hard. Once you know your total costs, then you just got to sit down and say, okay, how does this fit into the total? And you may have to do some wild wags, I don't want to say they're wild ass guesses, but I mean, you're going to have to do a little bit, but you can figure that pretty close. And you can, and you can program the computer to figure it to the inch. So I want you to know what your operating costs are, that a large amount of your operating cost is salaries, wage, full and part time. And I want you to know what your inputs are because you, because one of your biggest inputs is labor. But you also have supply. I mean, you buy pollinating bags, you buy seed envelopes, you buy harvest bags, you buy boxes, you do this, these things, you buy steaks. You can go on and on, but they're part of your cost. And so you need to know at the end of the day what it costs for a nursery row, what it costs for a yield trial plot, and how this money is spent. Once you do that, then I want you to take it a step further 
And I'm going to add something today that I never ever saw in research literature until, until recently was actually try to tie your budget to improvements in genetic gain because that's what we all have to do. I mean, if there's going to be all these people on the earth by 2050, how are we going to feed them if we don't make genetic gain? Now, there may be processes and technology and science that we don't even know about right now that five years from now will make a big difference. But at any rate, it's all about improving genetic gain. So I say when you take the Borlaug equation or plant breeder equation and you just say standardize the selection, standardize the number of years, you've got that. And when you look at the rest of the equation, when you look at the equation, you're pretty much left with the accuracy of selection times the additive genetic variance. And the more your accuracy of selection is improved, the better your additive genetic variance will be, which is the variance of breeding values, which is the variance of genes that combine independent and additively, and that is the variance you can exploit in your breeding program. Okay? So at the end of the day, everyone at your location, and you, I used to get out of my car, and before I'd walk in the building, I'd think to myself, okay, what can I do today to beat everybody else? That was my mindset. You don't have to be quite that aggressive, but you need to come in there every day and just say, you know, what can I do today to, to help the company improve their genetic gain? Because that's what your job is. You want to get right down to it, all of us, is improve genetic gain. And then the part of the thing is when everyone works to improve the accuracy of selection by decreasing error, by controlling genotype by environment interaction or understanding it by taking you know the genetics components of invariance and increasing them all that happens you do that so at the end of the day I want you to think of your station as you're you're a machine and your goal you you operate to improve genetic gain and improve the accuracy of selection and to do that as economically as possible to keep your costs down. Now, it's, it's almost easier to improve genetic gain than to keep your costs down. But if you can lower your costs or increase your genetic gain, you're going to improve that percentage. But I want you to think about your budget as the dollars it costs for 1% of genetic gain. And this has to be over time. You have to do a cycle or whatever, but you can figure it out. And it also, you have to determine how you're going to define what success is, whether it's just improving the means of your breeding populations or whether it's like something like how many hybrids you, you get advanced to the next level or what gets commercialized or that sort of thing. There's all different ways. Everybody's got to figure that out, but start expressing your budgets and think of the dollars you spend as how they relate to the genetic gain for your company and how does it improve the accuracy of selection for your company, the things you do, and then take a look at all of your processes, how can you improve them, how you can make them more cost effective. So at the end of the day, that's what we all need to do. This is David Benson with Cornhusker Hybrids in Lincoln, Nebraska. The, the seed is starting to be turned about now, world depending whether you're in the northern hemisphere where it's we're going into spring or you're in the summer or in the southern hemisphere where it's going into fall it's all exciting it's all fun so let's keep let's think about how to work with the operating budget for your station or your part of the research business and how that relates to the genetic gain and accuracy of selection overall for your company Thanks and have a great day.